Wow. Just, I don't know. I've just, I've had one of those afternoons, guys. That's the game. Uh, today, went and took my dog for a walk with my with my daughters, uh, trying to get my head around what I'd watched, what I'd seen, what had gone on during that game this afternoon. Um, you know, just absolute mentalist, just an absolutely mental, crazy game. Uh, opportunity missed, maybe. Game of two halves, maybe. Same old, same old, maybe. You know, lots to talk about, lots to talk about. And like I said, I want your thoughts, your opinions, everybody in the live chat, guys. So, sorry, Mr. Gamer here later for the chat. Like I've got to say, to be honest, sick of that defence, really, bo uh, really bottle us, really. Take a point since been 2 0 down, but Gizo, uh, they need to get up for these games. Even going in the chat, still raging from the same old mistakes from the same old players. Time to get rid, move on. If Clemon on this board is serious about taking us to the next levels. Howdy to Stuart. Uh, Juicy Bear Gaming says they can still we, we can still win the league, but it will be difficult. Evening, everyone. Uh, keep believing. Keep believing. Ziggs the Wolf. Oh, oh, Ziggs, how you doing, buddy? Pacer, how you doing? One of my mods. Good to have you here. And, of course, Stuart as well says we always have to do it the hard way. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. That was a tough watch. It was a tough watch. It was a tough stream to do, guys. Um, look, I think... Look, let me just talk a little bit generally about this thing before we get your, you involved in the podcast tonight. Um, you know, as well, uh, sorry for my political outburst earlier. Too much old firm tension. Mine too, Ziggs. Mine too, buddy. Uh, Stuart says, Juicy Bear, anything can happen from now to the end of the season. The league is far from done. I agree. Anything could still happen. I don't back them to win all their games the same way I don't back us to win all our games either. Um, you know, I think we'll probably do a Rangers at some point. But look, let's let's get things straight. Let's get things in perspective. First half, we were absolutely dreadful. We were absolutely, genuinely dreadful in the first half. I mean, we could have gone in easily 4-0, 5-0 down. I, you know, but for three fantastic Jack Butland saves, this could have gone so much worse. Um, it could have been so much worse. Jack Butland pulls off those saves, keeps us in the game. Uh, Silver, you know, misses that chance. It could have been a very different game going into half time. Um it really could. Pace said, is that mob hurting? Be a better point for us. Okay, so look, it is genuinely confusing. The second half, I think whatever Philippe Clement said to them at half time and the change that he made as well, I think made a big difference. Abdallah Seema, I think, made a huge, huge difference. Second half, I think he really, really genuinely did. Massive, massive difference. Um, huge difference coming on. I think he provided width to the right. He pushed Greg Taylor back. He caused them a lot of problems going down that right-hand side. And he vastly improved the performance. After nearly having a heart attack, has uh, scored the third. But league is ours. Win all our games, says Robert. That's the answer. The, the one, Robert, that we've obviously got to be concerned about is the one when we go to Parkhead. We don't have a great record at Parkhead. We genuinely don't. After that first half, Pace said, Defo, a better point for us, mate. Now, second, uh, Janet, how you doing? Evening to Janet. Evening, Janet. Um, Pace says, time's up for Tav, Goldson, Lundstrom, Barisic and Wright. We will get on to that. I do want to talk about that tonight. First half, Sunday morning, afternoon, nightmare. Second half, starter syndrome. It needs to go particularly in the old firm games. Absolutely. Yeah, again, it's it's another example. I mean, everything we talked about on, on the videos, on the preview podcasts, was around fast start, wasn't it? Fast start, straight into them, get into them, get after them, and really take them on. That was the big one for me. Huge one for me. Um, you know, it really was just, it needed to come, but we just, again, slow start. And you cannot have that slow start. You really genuinely cannot have that slow start against them. They will make you hurt. Now, look, all quite, as bad as we played, as bad as we played in that first half, Celtic did. Look, I hate them. Don't get me wrong. I hate them. But let's give them some credit for the fact they actually did play well in the first half. They pressed us high. They got after us. They caused they caused us a lot of trouble. You know, they, they did everything they could to make the game as difficult as possible for us. So, you know, let's, let's talk that through. Second half, a whole lot better. A whole lot better. Hi, Owen and all. Uh, two most experienced players cost us two goals today. Tav and Goldson, not good enough. Okay, so what I want to do, guys, in this podcast is I want to get you involved in the podcast, but I want to just, I want to just give you a general overview of how I'm feeling after that game. Um, talk to you a little bit as well. I'm gonna, at the end of the part, I want to talk to you about the channel as well. Um, so, look, in terms of that first half, yeah, Tav 
you've got to say, like Janet says in the live chat here, I mean, ta you know, he says here, um, spot on. I mean, 22 seconds, Maida scores, James Tavernier, what are you thinking? I mean, you watch James Tavernier there. He is not watching. He is not aware of what's around him. He is jogging back. Maida's making ground on him. Maida, Maida makes ground on him, takes him apart, and, and he scores. And it's all down a bad defender. And I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. We should have got. Tav had a shocking game. Shocking, shocking game. Shocking game. Awful game. Um, just genuinely really bad game, didn't he, today? He was poor. He was very poor. He wasn't the poorest player on the pitch. Uh, I thought Goldson was. And Goldson, why is he jumping with his elbow up like that? Why has he got his elbow up? He doesn't need to. I know there's a player coming in, but how many times has Connor Goldson got away with handling the ball in the box? You know, and he's done it, he's done it on a number of occasions now. And look, one thing I want to get away from, and I've watched the, the penalty incident back, both penalty incidents back, Again and again, I've watched about four times both of them. You know, now I, I I was wrong. On the, I'm going to come out and say I was I was wrong about the penalty on Silver. It was a penalty. He does sweep his leg across his thigh, and in this modern game, it is a penalty. No matter what Chris Sutton says, as it's a joke, or Michael Stewart says, it is a penalty. Why is it a penalty? Because any sort of contact on an attacker, the attacker is within his rights to go down the box. If there is contact made under the rules of the game, it is in this modern game, rightly or wrongly, a penalty. And the other one I want to I, I want to put across is this. I don't want to hear it's a soft penalty. There's no such thing as a soft penalty or a stonewall penalty. It's a penalty or it's not a penalty. There is no such thing as a soft penalty or a stonewall penalty. It's a penalty. It's not a penalty. End of story. OK, I don't want to hear that Rangers got a soft, dodgy penalty because they didn't. They got a penalty. Celtic got a soft or soft or dodgy penalty no they got a penalty end of story end of it okay and i agree with janet what she says there pacer says that chris sutton should never comment on chris sutton was awful today it was absolutely absolutely dreadful absolutely awful today he really was beat dundee and uh by six draw piggery it's ours says robert and that's the thing i think obviously there ref bottled it with carter carter vickers multiple times says the kurgan i, I agree we need to get rid of all those players says stewart uh, why do we always wait till a 12 what till, till we're one two down against that mob to start playing it's so annoying it's maybe a psychological thing buddy maybe a psychological thing Stuart. i don't know maybe that could be it uh philippe says if we had player if we played like the first half like that first half uh we played second half we would have walked that game we always make it so difficult for ourselves i agree a hundred percent a hundred percent philippe if we come out and we played from minute one like we talked about in the podcast the other day at them, up and at them for a minute one, we, it would have been a very different game. Um, what have we got here? Septic showing they can be a dirty team, way of amount of the fouls on the players. Agreed. Uh, all, I always stuff at loyal. Yeah. Dominic Morgan says, I think the wind took Tav by surprise. If you watch it back, he seems to be mouthing come out to Butland, but it was Tav's fault. Uh, some of our players are scared of that mob. Clemon must get rid if he wants to be successful i agree there's a lot of them there that are very very afraid aren't they of the celtic players good evening owen the only way to describe the first half was in disgrace no pride or fight for jersey or the fans 100 percent a pen but silver doesn't make it easy on himself about the floor or half of the game i agree with you massively on that one Stuart, you're spot on I i've got to say Silver needs to get off the ground. He really needs to stop this histrionics that he does. You know, the rolling round, the, the the throwing his arms in the air, the, the the behaving like a toddler in a supermarket who doesn't get get the toy that he wants or the or the or the, ma the magazine that she wants. He needs to stop it because he's he's letting himself down badly. And I think he's going to get a reputation. Really, genuinely going to get a reputation. Butland, awesome, but Silver needs to stay on his feet more. Brenda can't moan about VAR today. Agreed. Uh, yeah, Butland was fantastic. I mean, yeah, I think he could have done more for the first and the third goals. I mean, that shot from Ida, come, I suppose the shot from Ida is excusable because it comes through Sterling's legs. He's a little bit unsighted. Uh, but yeah, some awesome saves, awesome saves today. Team selection was all wrong today. You would have thought we have learned from it. Absolutely, team selection was genuinely not right from the off. I was, but I said that, you know, when I, when I started the live stream this morning at, um, Whatever time it was, was 11.35, 11.45, whatever time I started this morning talking to you guys. I said I was genuinely surprised by the team selection, genuinely shocked. You know, right being in the team for me was a shock. Lawrence over Cantwell for me. Lawrence today, look, I love, I don't get me wrong, I love Tom Lawrence. Absolutely love him to bits. I think he's a brilliant player, but he was shocking today, genuinely, very bad. 
Right, I'm glad that's cleared up. <laughs> I, I, I heard that it was a clear pen. Right, hopefully we'll not play. Right, I don't know how Right gets a game. There, are no, there was no soft penalties. We just played like shite. Absolute, absolutely shite today, says Stuart. We can match them in any game. We just start so slow. We do, absolutely. We were disjointed in the first half, says Suffolk Loyal. Great, absolutely. William says, silver penalty was no different to the one given in the Arsenal game. Answer me this. Why are no septic players ever booked for a second time, regardless of how many fouls they commit? I agree. There was a number of times. Dyson Maida, after he gets booked, gets... Um, gets gets away with multiple fouls on our players and he's not booked for a second occasion um that is huge absolutely huge now there has been there was an interesting article uh thank you dominic morgan for gifting five memberships guys if you have not got a membership to the channel yet all you need to do is to go on to um go on there uh, put allow gifts and you can get yourself a membership to the channel guys a brilliant opportunity there to get yourself a membership to my channel uh, thanks to dominic morgan obviously gifting those memberships uh, so thank you dominic for that nice picture of the septic bench and we got our third absolutely what does right bring to the game great point silver is the new billy the fish flopping around uh clemon says seema changed our game he did he did a lot he did absolutely 100 100 percent um did that um you know he did 100 percent obviously um make sure that that happened and i think that was that was one thing uh that really did you know that the, the, the seamer did make a huge huge change uh i know it's for loyal i had two derbies today rangers versus smell and main united versus the spoonheads too much for me to handle silver penalty was no different yeah, that's what we talked about that haven't we yeah i think that's yeah you said, what does right bring to the game uh, i don't know Stuart. i genuinely don't know how the guy gets a game i really don't um he you know it's just you know, it really is a genuine weird one, in my opinion. Um, really genuinely is a very weird, weird situation. Um, just, I don't get how it happens. I don't get how it happens. Uh, Robert says, um, usual suspects letting us down again. Absolutely. Uh, Yadab, by the way, says, glad that Seam is back. Honestly, missed him. And I think that that is a great point. I mean, obviously, we get back to 2 1 with that penalty and it's a penalty. I've watched it back now four or five times. It's a penalty. It's a huge, it, it is a penalty. It's not a soft penalty. It's not a hard stonewall penalty. It's a pen. Right. So let's, let's just deal with that one. Okay. So second goal, the second goal, obviously that is then disallowed. Um, the Dessa's goal, um, is look by the strict letter of the law. If you're going to give a penalty for the Dujon stuff, for the, for the silver foul, you've got to obviously then give a foul against Tom Lawrence for the tackle on Iwata, was it? Iwata does go down very easily, granted. But for me, it, you know, it is a foul. It is in the it is in the same phase of play. Therefore, it has to be given as a um, as a star. It, ha it has to be reversed that decision. So you know, Dessas did well to finish it as he did. Of course, he did. But at the end of the day, look, let's let's deal with it this way. It was it, it, it was it was rightly unfortunately ruled out. If it hadn't been, we go and win the game. But yeah, rightly ruled out, hundred percent ruled out. Dominic says, not sure if you noticed, but Southgate was at the game. I did actually. Yeah, the camera focused on him on Sky. Surely Butland makes the England team now. You've got to say that he should be in with a great chance. He's better than Nick Pope. He's better than uh, Johnston. He's better than Trafford. He's better than Jordan Pickford. He's better than all those guys. Absolutely. Uh, Seema, Campbell and Matondo changed the game for me. They did. I thought Matondo, again, what a goal by Matondo. But I'm going to talk about Seema's goal first, Janet. Um, Suffolk says he can't stand the banks or the Scousers. Um, being shit and getting a draw is not too bad. Wes says, losing a goal straight from kickoff rattled us, but come on, people, what a second half for us. Yeah, it was an incredible second half. Guys, 53 watching, please smash the like. And if you've not yet smashed the like, then please, obviously, as well, make sure that you get in there and get um, get get a, get a subscriber in there as well, please, for me. Uh, okay, so where are we up to? Seema's goal. Yeah, Seema's goal. I mean, that, for me, just shows what a class act Seema is. I mean, the ball falls to him straight away. Bang. Scores. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Great finish from Seema. And that's what we've missed. We've missed having someone that can just put the ball in the back of the net. No nonsense gets his body position right, gets over the ball, slams it in the back of the net. 
Abdallah Seema is a huge, huge miss for me. Uh, and having him back now, I think he's going to make a massive difference. It's going to be like a new signing on the run into the end of the season. And I, I genuinely hope we see him start against Dundee. I really do. Um, but yeah, I thought he was excellent. Absolutely excellent. Ewan says, Seema and Rotondo need to start the rest of the games to, uh, to come, except Reed Knight with the state of Dens Park pitch in case they get injured. That's a great point. That's a great point from Ewan there. Um, absolutely great point from Ewan. Yeah, that is the worry. I mean, the Dens Park pitch, and I don't know if any of you have seen the highlights from Motherwell. I actually I actually watched the Dundee Motherwell highlights the other day, uh, yesterday evening. And I'll be honest with you, that pitch is absolutely dreadful and is a major worry about our players getting injured. I think it's the right call, to be honest. I, I felt bad, bad for Dessas because I don't think he was actually that bad today. Uh, it says Yadar, by the way. We need much better performance at the gyro dome or we will throw the league away, says Hugster. We do need a 90-minute performance, Hugster, not a 45 minutes performance. Bobby Finley says, Cameron Carter, Vickers and Johnson should have had two yellows. I agree. Lundstrom Wright, Diamande and Lawrence offered nothing in attack or defence. The gaps in midfield were shocking, says Jerry Greenwood. Um, and a great smile after it. Thanks for the gifted, says Dominic. To Dominic, says Kurgan. Good second half, but need to play that for 90 minutes. No 45, we can play well. Just didn't don't seem to do it against that mob. Correct. David says, I was going to leave at half time if Wright came out for the second half. David, I don't blame you. I would have turned the stream off, I think, if Wright had come back out. Uh, 100%. Now, Bobby Mad, Bobby, um, what's he called again? Bo Bobby, what's his face? Uh, Bobby Madden, that's his name, has been talking about the decision that was given, um, the, the three main decisions, okay? Um, Roof was, I don't know what is going on with Roof Hugster, if I'm being honest with you. He wasn't on the bench today. I mean, I know Rid Van Yilmaz is not fit, but I genuinely don't know what is going on with Raskin and Roof. Um, I genuinely don't know what's going on with them. I mean, Raskin seems to be completely out of the picture. I genuinely think he could be one that is moved on in the summer, as Clermont clearly doesn't fancy him unless he's injured again. I don't know what it is, but genuinely for me, Raskin is gone, I think, at the end of the season because Clermont clearly doesn't like him or rate him. And Roof, obviously, as we know, is out of contract. I think we've seen the last of Kimar Roof in a Rangers shirt, if I'm being honest with you. Um, he's apparently isn't injured. I'd but can't play 90 minutes, so it isn't being even considered. I don't know what it what is the what is the issue there. Uh right was awful. We were playing with 10 men from the start. He needs to go now. Uh Kieran Dow returned, but Raskin is nowhere. Good point, Pacer. You know, Dow comes straight back into the team, straight back onto the bench, and gets straight back onto the pitch. Where's Raskin? What's going on with Raskin? Great question. James, I wish they were as bad as they look, <laughs> bad as you say. Uh, great coverage. Looking at the bigger picture, if PC gets his tune from this mob, I think what we will be like next season, we are getting rid of useless big earners. We finally have a real manager. Correct. 100% there. Paul Ayton says, I think the wind also played a part. We were way off in the first half. Can't leave defenders isolated. So let's talk about what Bobby uh, Madden said uh, about those three decisions today. Um, some interesting decisions. So the first one, was the Connor Goldson handball. Um, Bobby Madden made this comment. He says, given the current criteria that this is a penalty, if you are the minority that don't think it's correct, blame the criteria. And I think he's right. He is really genuine. I can't get in my heart, guys. I think he is genuinely right on that one. Um, look, it's not the ref's fault. It's not VAR's fault. It's not Nick Walsh's fault. Partly it's Connor, Connor Goldson's fault. Why he is jumping like that, God only knows. I don't know why he is hitting, jumping like this with his elbow out. And like I said, Connor Goldson a number of times goes in with his arms up, his hands up. He needs to learn to keep his hands by his side. Um, so look, that, that is part of it. Or in a natural position when he jumps, which is that is not a natural position when you jump. OK, it just isn't. So, yeah. Uh, Bobby Madden's right. On the criteria, it's a penalty. Unfortunately, whether you think it's a, and I don't want to use the word particularly soft penalty, hard penalty, whatever, it, on the modern criteria, that is a penalty. Okay. Then on the uh, the silver penalty, he says, this is a penalty. Yes, the attacker has been falling regularly, but you can only judge this incident. His reaction is theatrical but you can't ignore the fact the defender is turned and makes clear contact with the attacker's thigh. The defender makes minimal contact with the ball, which is not significant enough to justify the contact that follows as the attacker would retain possession. Some people are asking for a second caution for the defender. That's not warranted. The award of a penalty is enough 
as the challenge isn't reckless. So apparently because the challenge wasn't reckless, therefore it is not a second yellow card, according to Bobby Madden. But he's he says, and this is a class one referee, one of the best referees Scotland have had, has come out and said that it is a penalty. So Brendan Rogers, read that. Weep, boy, weep. Um, he says about the disallowed Dessa's goal, he says a similar contact to the penalty ward. This is how the attacking team won possession and where the attacking phase of possession is checked from. This foul can't be ignored and the goal therefore has to be disallowed. So that's that's what Bobby Madden has said. And like I said, Bobby Madden is a class one ref. You know, he's a guy who's refereed top games. You know, he's he's applying the criteria as it as it stands. And I think, you know, he is right on those things. So look, let's put those behind us now. We're going to hear bleating, whining, whinging, moaning from the other side of the city. Of course we are. We're going to hear about Masonic conspiracies. We're going to hear about all sorts of conspiracies. But that's just them all over. Never never defeated, always cheated. That's the way they've always been, hasn't it? Um, Stuart says, Owen, you think Danilo can be the forward to get to the goals against that mob? Jury is out for me. Stuart, the way I'd say it is I don't think we can actually judge Danilo now until next season. Even if he comes back now, now he is not going to have the time to hit the ground running. He is not going to have the time to get himself match fit. I was once listening to a uh, footballer talk about match fitness and getting back to match fitness after being out injured. It takes four to six weeks to return to full fitness. So for me, he won't. I think you can't judge Danilo yet until next season. You've got to give him next season to, to see whether he's up to the job. I think he is a good player. I think he can get goals. Uh, do I think he's the answer? May I don't honestly know. Judgment is out until next season, buddy. Uh, last week during the warm up, Roof looked like he was a coach, stood about with the ball. Today he was part of the warm up, but he wasn't on the bench. Why, David? That's the big question, isn't it? Lately, we haven't created enough chances. Des is working hard to try and create his own, says Jimmy in the load, Jimmy Lothian. Do well, showed a bit of pace when he came on, but always injured like the rest of this team this season. No new 30 grand a week contract for John Lundstrom, I'm afraid. Yeah, I thought Lundstrom was piss poor um, this season. I genuinely did think he was not very, very good at all. Um, again, he doesn't turn up against them. Again, he he's just doesn't play well against them. And I think, you know, he plays well against the lower teams. And I think we're seeing the true John, true John Lundstrom in this game. You know, whether he gets a new contract or not, that's down to Big Phil and Niels Coppen. James says all three big decisions were correct. I agree, 100%. Has Raskin not got a history with Clermont from back in Belgium? I don't know. I'd have to research that, Wes. When do we go top? If we beat Dundee on Wednesday, buddy. Goldson knew what he was doing. He did. He did. Why does he do that? I don't know. It's just ridiculous. Hugster says, I thought VAR got all three decisions right today. Amazingly. Look, I'm going to say something controversial here. I don't think John Beaton had a dreadful game today. I don't, I'm not saying he had a good game, but I don't think he had a bad game today. So let's, let's, you know, let's actually praise the referee where, it, where it's, you know, spot on. Bob, how you doing, buddy? Good to have Bob here. Uh, silver pen, we were lucky. We were lucky, but it's a penalty. It is a penalty. Scott Wright should never play again for Rangers, says Ian Dill. J Ian, I think the thing is, we've got Dundee, James. Um, I think, genuinely, mate, um, I don't get why he is in the team. I don't get why he is playing games i don't see what the manager sees in him i know he's decent at tracking back i know he's quite quick but realistically you know if you go back and watch that first half today what does scott wright contribute to that game tell me what does he contribute to the game because to me again he's contributed absolute jack all to that game he really genuinely has just i thought it was poor genuinely poor uh, the amount of tags I've seen cha uh, chanting Johnson's got the ball is laughable. Clear pen, and they need to stop greeting. I agree, Ida, by the way. Uh, six Celtic players booked. There was uh, not Butland's best game, says Ian. Uh, when the fixtures for the when are the fixtures out for the split? I think it, a lot depends on when these games take place, buddy. I think if this Dundee gets get, game gets postponed, then you could see a delay in it. Um, I'll try and find out for you. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Split. And the split fixtures announced. Uh, that's for the Scottish Premiership. Key dates. Let's have a look on the key dates website on the Scottish PFL. May 2024, April. Semi-finals, Champions League, May. 
doesn't say. I don't know. I don't know at the moment. I'll look at I'll try and find out, Philly. Leave it with me. Uh, Lunny was honking. Lunny wants 40k a week for a two-year contract. No way. 100 percent Uh my worry is with De Neo that he's the new roof, and we spent six million on a player who's constantly injured. I can see that, Stuart, but I think both the injuries he's had that have kept him out long term this season haven't actually been his fault. I mean, the first one is a fractured cheekbone where, where, where the, the uh, player takes him out. He knows what he's doing. And the second injury is that that foul again, which the Hearts player knows exactly what he's doing in taking him out of the game. His injuries are not muscular related in terms of strains through running, jumping, sprinting. They are injuries through contact with other players. So I think it's a little bit harsh to say he's the new roof, buddy. Uh, Beaton was pretty good at refing. Uh, Goldson closes his eyes all the time. He needs to stop it. Uh, we got away with that performance today. If we get right against them at Septic Park, the league will be ours, says Janet. Absolutely. I do think it is. If we can get a 90-minute performance, it is um, a definite one. You know, absolute definite one. We can get a win there. Uh, Tav, Goldson, Lunny, Lawrence, Silver, and Wright were huge disappointed. They very weak performances. I agree 100%. I was so disappointed in Tom Lawrence, really was. Now, look, I said the other day that I wanted Cantwell to start. Um, that was my choice for, for the starter. But he starts Lawrence. I wasn't overly gutted. I like Lawrence. I do like Lawrence. I think he's a great player. I do really like him. But he was very, very poor today. His decision-making wasn't good. His passing wasn't good. All of his stuff was really bad. Silver spent too much time rolling around on his ass. Tavern Goldson, look. Tavon Goldson have been fantastic servants for this club. Do not get me wrong. They have been amazing servants for our club. Tavernier's stats are off the chart. They are amazing, right? And I do think we're missing. But whenever we play against that lot, they seem to let us down, go missing, make stupid mistakes, have some sort of mental error or mental block. So, yeah, they do let us down. 100%, buddy. 100%. Uh, Bob says... That Beaton had a better game than usual today, was just too lenient with Celtics fouls, but okay. Otherwise, I agree that was how he could have made it a perfect performance, a good performance. Uh, do you resign Lundstrom? Why pay big bucks for Lundstrom when he can't perform against Celtic? Kyle, I, I kind of look, I, I've changed my mind. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to just say I trust Clermont to make the right decision on this one. Really, genuinely do. Really, genuinely do. Um, yeah, absolutely. But the beginning to be black <laughs> Nice one, Suffolk. Facts are we win all our games with champions. Correct, Ian, or we win all our games, draw with them at Parkhead with champions. Uh, I think it's I think it's after next weekend. The fixtures are split announced there in okay, you and thank you for that one. Uh add right and Lundstrom to list of players out the door. Have to wait for fixtures after Rangers Dundee and Ross County Dun uh, Ross County Rangers. Both of those games will be live streamed here on the channel, guys. We will be live streaming on Wednesday night the Dundee game, and we will be live streaming on the 14th, the uh, the Ross County game on the Sunday, don't worry. So I will be here for both those games, so please come and join us for both those games. Oh, God, need to go now for a new captain when the time comes. Who gets it? Good question, Ziggs. Good question. That's a discussion for another video, I think. Um, what have we got here? First half killed us. That was Beal-like performance. Goldson now needs dropped. Balogun and Suter need to start. RFC 72. I have banged on about this all season and been absolutely slaughtered for it. Got absolute pelters from people on social media for daring to suggest that Connor Goldson gets dropped. I have been saying this for a long time. If you go back to that game against Hibs at Easter Road, the one we won 3-0, Suter and Goldson, Goal, Suter and Balogun are our central defensive par pair for that game. They were absolutely excellent in that game. They did really, really well. They covered each other well. They kept it solid at the back. There was no mistakes. There was no lapses of concentration. There was no balls over the top beating them. They looked brilliant together. Yeah, I agree. And I've say I've, I have banged on about that so many times and I have got so much of a slagging for it. It has been untrue. We go top on Wednesday and stay top until next game against them. Then the pressure will be on them. I know I'd rather be in the lead table, says Philippe Clement. True. Uh, we need to stop being second half team against a poor Celtic side. Hopefully it's not like this for the next old firm. My heart, can he take it? It's right, you da, by the way. You've got to play for 90 minutes against this lot. You've got to. Absolutely. Tavern goals have just taken a handsome ways to have. Stuart says, but Owen, how many players do we bring in? Uh, 
and then missed the full season. Lawrence last season, Ridvan now, Danio, it's more than just bad luck. I think Billy Clemon has kind of talked about that, hasn't he? You know, we talked about that on the video on Saturday. We know the big changes are coming video that I brought out on Saturday. Clemon's talked about that, hasn't he? He's talked about how we'll see big changes in terms of the fitness schedules for next season, personal fitness plans, you know, better pre better preseason conditioning, all stuff I think that will help players stay on the park rather than be off the park. And if you look at Clemon's track record as well, 95% availability in most of his teams. So look, we've got to trust him to get this right. Um, Rogers targeted Tav today and it worked. He's got to go in the summer. I agree. Goldson took off, took off. He got slower and slower. Hope it's Suter and Balogun from now on. Like I said, Bobby, I have banged on about that all year and been absolutely slaughtered. Ian, this is what I've been saying. I've said this on a number of occasions. If you want to win the league, you've got to beat them. And it's not just about, look, yes, we can win the league without beating them this season because we can draw with them a parkhead and still win the league. But for me, it's about more than just that. It's about laying down a marker. It's about saying to them, we are back. We are back. They will feel now that we're not that far ahead of them. They will feel now that, you know what, give it another six months. Give it another few months. Get the summer in. They bring some more new players in. You know, they're going to they're, they're gonna feel that they can beat us next season. Um, you know, we're going to have, obviously, a summer where we, can, we have to retool, get players out, get players in. But look at it this way. Look at it this way, um, uh, Ian. We do need to beat them. I agree. We do need to beat them. Would give Balogun and Suter a start together. Goldson's been crap for a wee while now. Agreed. The amount of people that sit next to me that couldn't watch Tao's penalty, I didn't either. Probably because we all thought the way he was going, he was going to miss it. Absolutely. Balogun over Goldson all day long. The only surprise about today is that people are surprised Tav and Goldson performed poorly today. That was the standard performance. Kyle, what have I said on numerous, numerous, numerous occasions against about Tav, Goldson, Borna, and got absolutely hammered for it. I've been slaughtered for this comment. I have been accused of all sorts, of not been a Rangers fan, of not been fit to support Rangers, of been overly negative. But you go back, yes, Tav and Goldson, um, Barisic can do it against those poor teams, St Johnston, Ross County, Kibbs, the, uh, Aberdeen, you know, those are teams that are not any good. But when it comes to performing in the old firm games against the top teams in Europe, they don't do it. And that's why, because they're not up to the task. I agree, Kyle. Lawrence was probably was, was off it, probably off it, probably off it. Kammer Goldson and James Tavernier have been mentally and physically crushed by Celtic for many years. It's took its toll. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. 100%. Be fair on Lundstrom, the entire team were garbage in the first half with the possible exceptions of Butland and Sterling. Lundstrom improved in the second half, as it did Tav, said Bob. Yeah, the first half, everyone was crap, apart from, yeah, I agree, Sterling and Butland. Um, you know, yeah, I agree with you there. I thought Diamande improved massively huge in the second half. Seven players on that park are getting launched by Big Philly in the summer. Ian, hit us up with the names. Heading off to work Owen, later, Owen, and chat. Absolutely, you can have a good time. Stuart, work out work goes well, well for you, buddy. Bit of fun, Willie Miller going mad. Don scored the last few minute, minutes offside. I hate that mob. If VAR can question a foul 30 seconds before a goal on how long before it's pulled back to true, but it was more because it was in that attacking phase because the, it wasn't... Jimmy, the reason it was disallowed was because everything started from that move. There was no break in that move. There was boarding go out for a throw in. There was no pass back. Everything was moving forward from that foul. So it's con it's considered one phase of play. If we'd got to halfway stop, turn, pass back, slow down, come back round again and then attacked, you could have argued it was a second phase of play, therefore not to be disallowed. But because it all happened in the same flow, when you're refereeing a game, that's considered as the same phase of play. Therefore, you have to come back for that foul. That's why. Um, I've got better, but Goldson always looked worried when they came onto him. Absolutely. Uh, Zig says, agreed, suit and Balligan is the way forward. Again, we have the quality, just the mentality game to win now. Absolutely. McBurney on a free. Would you take him personally? I would. Yeah, he, he scored in the Premier League. If, if, if you can score in the English Premier League, you're going to score pretty much anywhere else. It's the, it's the hardest league in the world. If you can score there, you're going to score there. Um. How do you get a spanner? You have to become a mod, Roberts, to do that. If the ref does not blow for a foul and the team scored, it should stand. 
Yeah, but it's VR can, reviews all goals, doesn't it? I want to see Suter starting as right side centre back and Bolligan's left centre back for ages. Golton has been way off in a good game. I agree, Bob. Massively off. Since the winter break, he has been very, very bad indeed. He has. He has. Uh, people talk about Tav's goal scoring record. I don't recall any Rangers fans clamoring to sign Graham Alexander when he was the highest scoring defender in British football. So why do folk defend Tav? I think the problem with Tav, with that, Kyle, is the fact that because we so heavily rely on Tav, um, that's why we so heavily we've so heavily relied on him to dig us out of the shit on a number of occasions. So that's probably why, buddy. Um, absolutely. Deckoff, no McBurney, tell him to buy a season ticket for Ibrox. Uh, was Scott Wright on the park? I'm afraid his Ibrox career is over. Big difference when Seema came on. George, you're right. Seema made a massive, massive difference for me uh, to that game. He did a huge, huge service to the club. He was brilliant. Really, really good. Uh, spot on. Really spot on. 100% um, spot on there with what you say, George. I think, you know, Seema... Gave us more attacking a 10. He caused them more problems. He forced the players. I, I can't remember was it, who was on the left for them now, but it was uh, Omaida and uh, Taylor. He forced them back. He forced them into covering because he was getting forward more. You know, he had he oh, he had Taylor in his pocket. He really did. Excellent. Shankin all day long. Uh, Pacer, so, uh, Pacer says, suit a cup. He did, didn't he? Absolutely. He rem you know what? Terry Butcher, take two. Terry Butcher, 2.0, buddy. Terry Butcher 2.0. Um, I think we should try and land Seema. Silver can go back down south. Too much diving. Stuart, I agree. I would love to see Seema um, signed on a permanent basis. Absolutely. Uh, Suffolk Loyal, which town player would you love to see play for Rangers? Uh, Amari Hutchinson and Leif Davis. I'm guessing Suffolk Loyal. Leif Davis or Amari Hutchinson. Leif Davis would be a good left-sided player to sign for us, wouldn't he? Yeah, so Suffolk Loyal, let me know what you think. Leif Davis or Amari Hutchinson? Let me know what you think. McLaughlin, Balligan, Barisic, Jack, Ruth, Lundstrom, Silva and Wright out in the summer. Hopefully keep Seema, Diamande and Cortez. We should keep uh, Diamande. It's on a, he is on an obligation to buy, not an option to buy Hugster. Uh, any news on Danilo? He is back in individual training, but has not yet progressed to be able to play in full training yet. So he is still out. No date on it. It was said to be late March, but that now has passed and we are now in April. So I don't know what is happening with him. Uh, Tav wasn't here, would still be trying to get up. I agree. You know, that's the thing. I think we've got to kind of respect Tav for what he did, you know, and what he has done for the club. I'm not saying that Tav is always or has always been a dreadful player because he hasn't. He genuinely haven't. Um, yeah, absolutely. I would say, you know, that that's the case. But Tav, the problem is with Tav and the problem is with, with Goldson and the problem is with Barisic and all of that back four is they are not getting any younger. They are all getting older. And as you get older, whether you like it or not, you slow down. You slow down. You get slower and you end up getting injured. Guys, I just got to plug my plug my laptop in two seconds. But yeah, I'm going to keep talking. Um, but yeah, as you get older, you slow down. You do slow down. And that's just how it is. Um, so yeah, I think the time has come for Tab to go. It really genuinely has come from Tab to go. Uh, okay. Uh in all honesty, we've got away with it today. That would have felt like a defeat for them today. We will get stronger with people coming back into the team. All is not lost. It's as you were, says Kyle. You're right, Kyle. You're right, Kyle. 100% correct. You know, they're going to be hurting more after that because I think they, they would have thought at 2-0 up at half time, we've won this. We've won this. This is our game to, to lose now. We've won this. It's three points for us. You know, we're going to be five points clear at the top. But or four points clear at the top. Sorry, four points clear at the top. But... Yeah, we came back, we fought back, and that will send a little bit of a shockwave through Celtic Park. Of course it will. Clement got it wrong starting Lawrence over Canwell. I agree with you. Canwell should have started. Should have started. Lots of negative talk about the match, but what about Matondo's goal? Second time in two matches he's done that. Both goals per Bob. Yeah, I've been trying to get to that throughout this entire podcast. I'm really on 40 minutes now. Yeah, 40 minutes, guys. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, brilliant goal. Matondo's goal was absolutely outstanding. The way he cuts in on his right foot, and smashes that into the back of the net was absolutely phenomenal. Brilliant, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and it was a fantastic. And I, I would honestly, um, I disagree on that one, Ian. I disagree. Um, I would honestly say that 
yeah, he, he's been brilliant. He has to start the next game. He genuinely has to start the next game. Good evening, Blue Nose. How you doing, buddy? Seema stays. I would say Amari is a shout. Yeah, I would, Amari Hutchinson is a brilliant player. Guys, if you, if you haven't seen Amari Hutchinson for Ipswich, he is a brilliant player. Really, really good. Seema and Matondo looked right up for it when they came on. That's why they should have started, says Janet. They did look very good and they changed the game. And I think that's one thing we've got to praise Philippe Clement for. You know, he, he realised and understood he was getting it wrong and it wasn't going well. So, yeah, I agree with you. He did turn it round. He did turn it round. We'll always respect Tav, but for fuck's sake, he should have passed it to Butland. I agree. How can we lose first half 2-0, then win the second half 3-1? Why can't we turn up from the start? Stuart, that's a great point. If Ridvan was there, I think it would have been different. Ziggs, excellent point. I think we missed Ridvan massively, hugely, hugely for that. I can't get over how much we missed Ridvan. Now, I don't think Dujon Sterling was bad. Dujon Sterling, I think, played actually really, really well today. Um, I genuinely do think Dujon Sterling had a good game at left back. But what I will say about Dujon Sterling is the fact that he really didn't, he, he doesn't have a left foot. Um, you know, that's one thing. He doesn't have a left foot. He's right footed. So if you notice, he constantly drifts inside all the time. Now, the thing I think with that is you therefore lose a lot of your natural width that, uh, that Ridvan gives you. So for me, having, um, having Ridvan there on the left-hand side, I think would have made a massive difference. Really genuinely do think it would have made a massive difference. It would have given us more balance to our attacks. Um, so I do think that would have been a big one. Uh, was Golden sub because of injury or was it tactical? It was, I think it was because of injury, because of injury. I went shout for Harrogate Loyal. My son and grandson set up at 5.30 a.m. this morning. Just got home 10 minutes ago. That's Loyal Rangers fans. Absolutely. So, Ian's son, Ian Dill, your son and your grandson, huge shout out to you tonight. Massive shout out to you. Huge loyalty. That is dedication, guys. 5.30 a.m. in the morning, getting up there and getting out, getting up for the game and, out, and getting back now just at just about, what, five past nine in the evening. That is huge dedication, buddy. Guys, well done. Loyals to the loyals always. I also want to give a big shout out to George Bryce from Camby. Uh, who said hello to Laura today. Apparently recognised Laura from the pod. She was out and about. Um, all my colleagues from Glasgow Rangers Nation have been out on the piss today. So you've got Damien is hammered, Kia is hammered, and Laura is hammered. It's only me that is in a sober enough state to do a podcast tonight. And that's because I've got work at 6am tomorrow morning. Uh, Camera's the second coming of Gaza. Oh, I would love that, buddy. I'd love that. Uh, what have we got? Oh, I've lost. I've missed loads of cough. Missed loads of comments again there. Uh, where am I going back to? Guys, I'm, I'm missing so many comments. I do apologise. Bob's off to bed. Good night, Bob. Absolutely. Thank you, Bob. No worries. I think I'm... Oh, Bob, good night, buddy. Thanks for your fantastic comments. Golson to have, to, have, to have to be sold ASAP. What Tav does offensively can be undone by... can be done by a striker. We lose too many good goals. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. One thing I will say, guys, um, Midvan only has a minor knock and should be back, hopefully, for the Dundee game. Like I am worried about that pitch, though. Really worried about that pitch. Um... One thing I'm going to say is I did see a, a very strange take on social media. I know social media is a weird place, but this take that, uh, you know, you only trust how to take those penalties. Well, I'm sure, you know, there's a number of players who could take penalties on a pitch. I really do think, you know, I, I think Seema would, would would smash a penalty and I think Canwell would take a penalty. So at the end of the day, I don't think it's a defence that just because he takes good penalties, he has to stay. If Sterling plays that good at left back, think how good he would be in his own position, should be in ahead against Tav next. Absolutely, I agree. Stick Sterling at right back, 100%. If Ridvan starts, Dujan goes higher and plays and as an attacker, better the defence would be. Yeah, absolutely, I agree, 100%. Borna can handle Dundee. Sid is a big Borna fan, I know that. Sid, I don't think he'll play. I don't think he'll play him. If Ridvan's fit, Ridvan's straight back in for me. 5am uh, in the morning, Calgary Stewart. Big shout out to you as well. 5 a.m. in the morning. That is dedication, buddy. Sterling will, will make a ridiculous amounts of money. The lad's a baller and a unit. Love him to bits. He will. He's one of those players, trying Scotsman, that we can flip and get the money. PC will have learned a lesson today. Do not tinker too much for an old firm. I agree, Spoke. Smoke. Uh, Sid wants Borner in desperately. I mean, that's performance out of their system. Absolutely. Let's hope so, Ian. Let's hope it is a performance out of their system. I think Dessa should have should take a few pens a lot. Dessa is actually quite good at penalties. I, I will actually stick up for him on that one. 85 people watching, please smash the like. And obviously, and obviously, if you want to support the channel, please do. 
I was very surprised. Me too. Me too. After that, oh, fuck up from Tav. Tav went on to boss there. Jack Winger says Blue Horizon. I'll probably have nightmares tonight thinking of Tav and Colton in our defence. I've joined the club, buddy. Join at the club. Uh, three weeks ago, Matondo out today. He's a bloody hero. Come on, the Bears. It was a brilliant goal, wasn't it? Brilliant goal. Sterling right back, moved Tav forward. That's an interesting thought, Ian. Can't see the manager doing it, but an interesting, de interesting decision. Tav and Goldson will cost us again. That is the worry at Parkhead that they go missing again. Uh, Smoke says, Borna is done, Sid, mate. Doubt we'll see him again. Probably not. Borna can fuck off, same as Goldson, says Blue Horizon. I'm surprised he was even in the squad at Sharpie Staunch. I'd be fair, Des has put in a shift today. Look, guys, it is, it's not the result we wanted, is it? We wanted a win today. We, we all talked about wanting a win today. But I think after the first half, which was absolutely genuinely, genuinely dreadful, I think that fight back in the second half was spot on, was excellent. And I think that's something we've got. We've got to try and take a positive from this today to take into the game on, on Wednesday against Dundee, to take into the game on Sunday against Ross County. That for all that went wrong today, um, for everything that went bad today, the positive is they showed the character to fight back in that second half. But our manager saw that what he did wasn't working. He changed it. He moved things around. He got into them at half time, and it made a big difference. A big difference. Uh, Jerry says, please play three at the back and the full backs are further up the pitch to help with the high press and right can clean the boots. <laughs> uh, smoke, I am playing Borna at Dundee to get Sterling on the right side and also get rid of time for Hart on Saturday. Hart is none to the 21st, Sid. We've got the Ross County game before we play against uh, against uh, Hart. Borna is leaving, mate. Uh, we have to win today, says Stephen. It's true, but we will take the draw. Dundee won't bother us, need to be clever. Sorry, guys, I can only see us shitting it at Shark Head. That is the big worry, isn't it? And I think that's one for another day. I mean, we'll talk a little bit more about that at another day. I think, you know, we could talk for hours about that. Um, I'm concerned about some of Phil's team selection, says Blue Nose John. As am I. Why Scott Wright keeps getting in the team is a huge, huge, huge concern for me. Uh, Jerry ha Gary Howden. Welcome, Gary. Another new name. First half display was an absolute embarrassment. Truly woeful. Gary, you're right, buddy. It was awful awful sid i hope so i genuinely hope so um hope so uh right was fouled the whole time he was on two of their scummy players could have been sent off today have their proper referee right may our first goal scoring chance i that's a week's worth of pods lol uh if it was not for tav goldson we would have won says stephen uh, Scott Wright needs to go, says Sid. I do agree with that decision. Uh, yeah, guys, just to sort of hip you up for what is coming up this week on the channel. First of all, on Wednesday night, we have a live um, for you on Wednesday night. Uh, we are coming at you live, bringing you the game. Um, <laughs> we'll park the bus at high, but like, well, maybe. Um, yeah, so Wednesday night, come and join me for the live stream, uh, Rangers versus Dundee at Dens Park if the game goes ahead. Please come and join me for that. Then on Thursday night, we'll be looking back at the Dundee game and looking ahead to the Ross County game. It will be myself, Laura Hatton and Kia Mitchell talking all things Rangers here on the channel. Um, then on Sunday, we'll be bringing you Ross County live as well. Saturday night, we might have another podcast Saturday. I'm just talking to the guys about that. Um, so, yeah, please come and join me for those things, guys. Just to remind you, um, you know, it's just coming to remind you, this is our new logo for the channel to summarise our Britishness. Rangers, is. I had someone having a go at me the other day saying we should have a Scottish flag on our badge. I said no, because Rangers is a British club. We are British. We are proud to be British. Uh, that's why I've got the Union Jack and the Lion. Obviously, we symbols similar is a symbol of Rangers and a symbol of our spirit and our dominance, isn't it? King of the jungle and we are the kings of Scotland. So that is the new symbol for the channel. So look out for that. Um, will Todd be in trouble because of the altercation with McGregor? Good question. But actually, if you look back, it was McGregor that started down. The reason it started. Now, this I have some intelligence on this. The reason that started was because apparently when uh, McGregor and Cantwell were coming on, Cant McGregor said to Cantwell, it's over, it's over, 2-1 Celtic, it's over, buddy. And apparently then Cantwell said something to McGregor at full time. Apparently that's what is happening. Yeah, she's back on Thursday, buddy. She's had a few per family things going on, but she will be back on Thursday. Um, 
So just to introduce you, if you didn't see this video earlier, this is just introducing to you our team here at Glasgow Rangers Nation, guys. We have got massive plans for the channel and we're hoping to do a live show at some point in Scotland as well. Uh, I'll be coming up to Scotland for a live show, guys. We'll hopefully see you at that. But this is my team. So yeah, guys, that is my team. Myself, Laura Hatton, Damian Hendry, and Kia Mitchell. That is your Glasgow Rangers Nation team. Um, Blue Nose, the reason I have Glasgow in the name is because if you search Rangers a lot of the time or, and you tag Rangers or you search the name Rangers, you get Texas Rangers, New York Rangers a lot of the time. That's why I keep the uh, Glasgow Rangers in it, buddy, just to make sure that content from my channel gets tagged to, to Rangers football and not to the American NHL sport. Okay, that's why. Uh, why is my picture not there? Curry, you, you want to come on, buddy? You are always welcome on the channel, Curry. Curry, follow me new on, on, the new, on my new X account, buddy. Curry, follow me on my new X account. I'll follow you. I'll drop you my number. You are more than welcome anytime on this channel, buddy. Uh, Rangers FC works on Google. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But, uh, but it's... I don't think I want to change the name of the channel too much. I, like I said, I don't want to get confused with the New York Rangers, who I fucking hate with a passion, and the Texas Rangers, who I don't like either. I'm a P Pittsburgh Penguins NHL fan. I don't like the Rangers. Okay. Uh, number 69 on the Lotus menu. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching the pod tonight, guys. Thank you, as always. Please smash the like on the way out. Thank you so much for watching the channel. I'll speak to you again very soon. Please smash the like on the way out and please always remember we are the people.